you have your Bible, turn with me to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, and we will start from verse 1 through 11. Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. Today is a very special day to remember our Lord Jesus Christ for his entry into Jerusalem. Most of us call it Palm Sunday, the Holy Week. So today we are going to learn about Jesus entering Jerusalem. The triumphal entry, also known as Palm Sunday. This is occasion very important in Jesus' life. And all the four gospel is recorded from Matthew chapter 21, verse 1 to 11, Mark 11, 1 through 11, and Luke 19, 28 to 41, and John gospel from 12, verses 12 through 19. In this passage, we come to the final week of our Lord Jesus Christ's life and his ministry on this earth. And the end of the week will be the cross and the resurrection. In the previous chapter, Jesus predicts his death as a second time in Mark chapter 9, he said to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days, he will rise. But the Bible said the disciples did not understand what he meant. And because of their afraid, they could not ask him. So up to this point, Jesus had never accepted public acclamation as a Messiah because his time was not yet come. They wanted to force him to be a king, but he fled because his kingship is not on this earth. He is not physical Messiah, but a spiritual Messiah. He came to die as a Passover lamb, John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of all world. So as we begin with our entry to Jerusalem, I will read Mark 11, chapter 1 through 11. So beginning from verse 1. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a cult tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. But if anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back shortly. Say, the, no, the Lord needs it and will send it back there shortly. Thank you. It sounds very good. They went, found a coat outside in the street, tied at a doorway as they untied it. So some people standing there asked, what are you doing? Untying that goat? They answered as Jesus had told them to. And the people let them go. When they brought the cord to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed 
is who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our Lord David, our father David, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into temple courts. He looked around everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you today as a special Sunday of Palm Sunday. We praise you for bringing us together here. Father, we remember the love that you loved us, that you willingly went to Jerusalem for cru crucifixion because of our sin. Father, thank you because of your love. Thank you that you have made us righteous before God. We praise you. Father, I pray that as I'm going to speak, may you speak to me. May you speak through me too, that your world will transform people, that you will never be the same. We thank you. Bless this service. Bless this sermon. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. So in this passage, we found three things very important here. The first thing we see, Jesus comes to Jerusalem as a king of peace. He's not coming as a political leader or someone who is coming by force or power. He comes as a king of peace. We see that he gives also specific instructions to his disciples and also gave them the answer how they should answer it. We see also from verse 4 to 10, the public procession. So here you see Jesus arrive in Bethany, and it's a little town called Bethany. You remember Jesus had friends, Martha, Mary, Lazarus, the one that he loved, the one Jesus raised from dead, and he's towards Jerusalem. He's willingly going to die. And one question I would like to ask you. If you know some place is very dangerous for you, even for your life to die, will you try to go to that place? I think Jesus does because of love. And that is the love that he demonstrates for us as a sinner. He did not die for righteous people. He died for you and he died for me. So this is the beginning of the Passion Week when Jesus is riding on to Jerusalem on a donkey. It's not a horse, but why donkey? It means he is coming in peace. Because most of the kings which will be arriving in Jerusalem, they will sit on horses. They are coming with power. They are coming with political power to overthrow the Romans. But Jesus came with peace. The passion which became Jesus' decision to come up Jerusalem is clearly determined for his understanding of the scripture, the Old Testament, and his prophecies concerning his death. He knows every detail that he is going to die for sinners. Jesus knew they would kill him, but because of love for sinners, not for righteous people, to redeem us from the bandage of sin, he was willingly going to die for us. This is how God demonstrates his love for us. Christ died for us. Jesus is spiritual Messiah. It's not political, as I said. He came to save us from sin. So we begin entering into Jerusalem. The Mount of Olives is where Jesus Christ was tempted and also tested. And if we can remember, he asked that the cup of suffering and the cup of wrath will be taken away from him. But what did he say? He said, it's not my will, but let your will be done. And I think as a church, as a believers, 
This word really touched my heart that we will always look for what the will of God. At times we have our own desire. At times we think things are not going well. What can we, what can we do? But let's pray for God's way to be done. Because he knows what is coming. He knows the future and his plan and everything is very perfect. Now he's walking towards the cross to die. There is a commission here. So Jesus went to the mountain of olives. He sent two of his disciples. He gave them some specific instructions. He said, verse 2, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. How can Jesus know that? Jesus is in different town, and know that there is a colt tied, no one has sat on it. Go and untie it. Because he is God. He knows everything. He knows what is happening even here right now. Jesus is God. He is the Messiah. What this tells us that Jesus is going to Jerusalem. He knows every details of the situation there. He goes to suffer. He is going willingly and according to God's perfect plan. Verse 3. Jesus gave them this mission and then gave them the answer to give. If anyone approach you and asks you, why are you doing this? Answer, the Lord needs it. I think, why should Jesus say, if anyone asks you? I don't know where you come from, but where I come from, if you go and untie a goat or a colt or a sheep, I think you are in trouble. They are not going to give hand over you up to the police. They are going to really beat you. You will be in trouble. And Jesus, I don't know, in the eastern area, maybe it's like that. And Jesus said, if anyone asks you, say the Lord needs it. And I think they believe in Jesus and they found the court exactly where Jesus showed them. And at least somebody asked them, are you untying the court? What are you doing? This in Africa is a big blow coming. <laughs> so when I was reading it, I was thinking these people really believe in Christ and they obey him. So why Jesus need a donkey? In the passage, it is fulfilled the prophecy. So God in his power, majesty, perfect wisdom, prepare this at the right place, at the right time to fulfill the perfect plan of the perfect purpose. This is fulfilled what was spoken by Zechariah. 500 years ago before Christ. Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9, what my brother Tim read. Rejoice, great to a daughter Zion, shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly. He was not riding on horse, very meek and lowly, riding on a donkey, on a colt. Of the fall of donkey. The donkey that Jesus rode speaks about Jesus' personality, his character, meekness, and his humility. It shows that he did not come to threaten the people, rather came to help them and take their burden upon himself. So he did not come to destroy, but Jesus came to love, not to condemn but to help us, not in power of force, but in love and humbleness. So he is a sovereign servant 
this is sufficient evident that to prove that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. The disciples went and did exactly what Jesus directed them. They brought a donkey and they called and they put them their cloaks and he sat on them. Think about these verses. The crowd welcomed Jesus. People spread their clothes on the court. People cut branches and put it down. They submit themselves to Christ as their king and their Lord. This was the time because before Jesus had quite people trying to tell him that he is the Messiah. He said, keep quiet because it's not my time. But we see here that is the time that Jesus showed the public that he is the Messiah and is going to Jerusalem to die for you and me. When they are coming to Jerusalem, it's a sign of humility and a sign of Jesus. But that kind of, what kind of king is Jesus? Maybe they have not yet understood as the disciples did not understand. But this king is going to the cross to die for you and for me. The crowd were those who were going in front of him and those who were after Jesus. And they cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna, the son of David. Some are behind and some are before him. They bless the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. What does Hosanna mean? It means save us. Save us now. You are the Messiah. Because it was prophesied that Messiah will come. He will save them. So they taught a political Messiah. But Jesus was a spiritual Messiah. So they are crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us. Save us now, Messiah. Save us from the Romans. It was a very exciting time. The king was humble. Does the crowd believe that Jesus is the Messiah? Yes, I think so. They believe. But what kind of Messiah? That is the Messiah who will redeem them from the Romans. There is opportunity now. An independent kingdom. They praise God, sending them prophet who is a national leader to restore, to fulfill the promise given to David. In a few days, the same crowd will shout to him, crucified him, crucified him. Can you imagine? Now people are praising Jesus. They are praising him. In a few days, they will turn against him, shout for his death. The miracles of Jesus did, did not convince them. They denied the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember Pontiac Pilate asked them, isn't this man your king? Is he not the king of the Jews? And what did they respond? When they brought Jesus to him, they respond, we don't have any king, but Caesar is our king. Jesus is not only prophet, he is the Messiah. He is the son of God. So they re recognize Jesus as king, but they make something here. They see Jesus as a prophet, but they did not see him as a son of God. Jesus himself is more than prophet. Jesus is God, son. Jesus is a king of peace. Jesus is a king of peace. Now entered the last week of his life and his ministry on this earth. Jesus spent the Sabbath at Bethage. He proceeded to Sunday morning to the city of Jerusalem, the king of peace. Jesus proclaimed himself as a king of peace by riding onto Jerusalem on a donkey. He did not ride on a horse because that animal would have suggested his kinship of another kind of kinship, which was maintained by war or force. 
Jesus came to fulfill the Old Testament prophecy to the Messiah. They proclaim him also as the Savior and King, and he accepted it in order to deliver what? Sinners. He needed to die for us. And it is expectation that we as the church on our side to open our eyes to see what he has done for us and acknowledge him as our king and our savior. Jesus usually performs miracles. He heals the sick. He commanded the wind and the waves and they were quiet. This is, he also tell the demons to be quiet when he cast them out. This is to avoid any public confrontation because his time has not yet come. And remember, Jesus has already said that he will go to Jerusalem. God has put his in Jesus' plans over 500 years ago. They cry out, said, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed are those who come in the name of the Lord. And people were quoting Psalm 118 verses 25. Lord, save us. Grant us sources. This is what they were thinking. Jesus is a political leader, so he will free them from the Romans. Hosanna means what? Save us now. From what are they asking to save from? Is it economic oppression or political oppression? Jesus prayed according to God's word. When Jesus was about to die, he did not pray that God, let the cup pass me. But he said, let your word be done. And I think as a church, as a believers, we can face many difficulties. But what we learn from here I think we should pray, God, let your will be done. At times, it will seem that God is not hearing us. At times, it seems that things are not going well. We will never understand. And with our own thinking, we try to do what will favor us or what God will bless us. At times, we have our own desire. We want to pray. This is my desire. I pray that God, you will bless it for me. But he has his plan. His plans is not about plan. So let us, God will be done. Who is Jesus for you? Is he your savior? Or are, we looking, are you looking for another savior? Why did the people turn against Jesus? They didn't get what they expected. At times, we pray to receive no answer. At times, God say yes. At times, he say wait. And at times, he will say no. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ of IBC, I'm trying to encourage you. Let our focus be on God alone. Because in very difficult situation, he can change things. Let us see what he's doing, that the church will follow Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. We pray, God, that your word will dwell in our hearts. And Father, I'm praying for RBC that, Father, let your word be done. Father, you have purpose for this church. Even in difficulty time, you have still purpose. Father, may you open our spiritual eyes to see what you are doing, where you are take moving this church to so that we can follow you. Father, may we not be proud, but humble ourselves and listen to you and follow you. Bless this church and protect us from the enemy. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray it. Amen.